What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Cal, bringing you another video on the channel. Ooh, hey. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about how I am suffering and I am loving it, right? So, earlier this morning, I found out, um, I became aware that UConn made they are going to make students have to get the vaccine, right? Obviously, there's exceptions for religious, medical, obviously. But if you if you don't meet those exceptions, right, then you have to get the vaccine to be on campus. And, you know, this video is not even going to be about COVID, maybe a little bit, but it's kind of going to reveal to you what happened to me after I became aware of it. So the university I go to currently has not mandated it yet, but it is within the same state, right? So, and UConn is the biggest university in the state of Connecticut, right? And so if UConn does it, which is a state school, public school, most likely my school is going to as well. And if you have been watching my channel for some time, you know that I do not want to take the vaccine. I will leave a video link down below in the description for why I think that. And obviously there's more perspectives that I have, but that mainly sums up everything that I think and why I am not going to take it. So as, as I became aware of that information, I noticed that I began to think a lot about it, right? And so over the past couple, I guess you could say month or two, I have not been thinking about COVID as much because I've been kind of catching myself thinking that the university I go to is not going to mandate it, you know? and. I began to believe, I was thinking I was chilling, you know, because it, the COVID vaccine is currently in emergency use, right? And it is not FDA approved. And so since it's a state public school, I was like, oh, there's, there's no way they're going to, right? But what do you know? More and more public state schools are mandating it. So as the time went on, you know, I, I had a discussion with another individual about it. And, and we pretty much just discussed like how I'm going to come to this dilemma of like, okay, am I going to trade my degree, right? All this secondary stuff, what I've been working for, for literally years now, or am I going to take the vaccine and is it worth it, right? So, and that's what I'm kind of at, right? And so this kind of situation, this kind of dilemma has within me brought up a great deal of suffering again because i remember a couple months back i was literally thinking about this issue every single day because literally covid at least on university campuses it's like a covid city all the restrictions right six feet wear a mask wash your hands that whole entire narrative is thrown on you right but here at home i don't come into that a lot besides going to the gym you know which it has been lifted a great deal but since I'm not in that environment anymore, I am not thinking about it as much. Therefore, it is not in my attention and it is not in my reality. But just because it is not within my conscious reality does not mean it is dormant within me. Which means, even though that suffering, I'm not feeling present, right? That suffering is dormant within me and in my subconscious mind. My subconscious mind means I'm the unaware part of my consciousness, right? Which is literally 85 to 90% of my consciousness, right? And that other 10% is our conscious attention field right here, right now, where I do this logical thinking, right? And so as I got home from the gym, and even at the gym, I was, I noticed that I continued to think about it. I continued and continued and continued. And the mind loves to think. The mind, it's, it's its natural ability to rationalize and critically think out conclusions and just continue to hypothesize and just come up with different scenarios, right? And don't get me wrong, it is an amazing tool, but I found myself identifying it with crazy, right? And as you begin to do more things, right, such as within your life, whatever you do, right, the patterns that you have, the, rep the repetitive patterns, your brain becomes, a, becomes accustomed to that. And when you start to alter that pattern, your body's like, what the hell? And it, it wants, it feels a natural urge to go and do whatever you usually do. But whenever you make that choice to do something else, right? So this could be, for example, like smoking cigarettes, right? Your body naturally, after you become addicted to cigarettes, you naturally want to smoke cigarettes, right? But then when you make that choice, be like, hey, maybe I shouldn't smoke a cigarette this time, right? You're, you're still gonna feel those cravings, but logically in your mind, 
you're taking a step back and you're not doing what your body wants to do, what it's used to. And so as I came home, I wanted to continue thinking about it. I wanted to continue rationalizing and coming up with a point of why I'm still valid and why this, and just continue the story, continue the narrative, and just keep pushing this within my mind. And so with this, you'll find as though that that suffering will continue on and on and on, right? From the past from and thinking about the future, it will carry on with you in each and every single present moment. And so I went outside to meditate where I usually do my mood stabilizing meditations that are incredibly powerful. And I found that thoughts are incredibly powerful. Thoughts, if you allow them to be powerful, are incredibly powerful, right? And once you realize this, you begin to think, okay, why am I hurting myself so much? Why do I continue to think? Why do I continue to think about something that is causing causing so much suffering for me? Why am I allowing myself to feel suffering? And let me, let, there's nothing wrong with suffering, right? Suffering is the greatest teacher, at least in my opinion, in humanity, right? And it is teaching me a lot right now because I am in an adverse state, right? And so it is not as easy as just be like, okay, I'm just not gonna, I'm just not gonna suffer anymore. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not how it works, right? I took a step back and I just observed. I still thought, I still had a bunch of thoughts. I still found myself getting sucked into each thought and then building on top of that thought and getting stuck in the trap. And then with this, as I came back up into my room, I wanted to look up more sources on COVID, right? And I wanted to do this, but then I was like, you know what, maybe I'm not going to. And I didn't want to check my phone either. And I felt this natural urge to. And that choice, like I said earlier, was out of my natural decision making that I would usually do, right? Because I don't go on social media much. I don't go on YouTube as much as I used to. But I found myself naturally wanting to be distracted from the issue itself. And the issue is not in regards to COVID. Yes, that is the content of the thoughts, right? And that's what caused the suffering, but it is deeper than that. It is the attention. It is the, and your attention is your awareness and your awareness is your consciousness, right? They're all interchangeable. And so when you look at this, this deeper issue here that causes all suffering when you're in your life, COVID aside, all suffering in general, 99.9% .9 suffering is caused by identification with thought, right? And so when we go on our phones to look at more COVID sources or more things that in regards to the topic that we are thinking about, we're only enhancing the pain, right? And so don't get me wrong, this can help you. Maybe you can find a conclusion about it, but when it is causing you distressful emotions, the best thing to do is just stop and be aware. Deep down inside, I knew by making that decision, I would be, it was the right decision. I knew it, right? Regardless of what my body was naturally telling me. And so you could even take this back a couple days ago. I was suffering a little bit and I, I, I just continue, as I went to bed, I continued to think, I continued to think. And these thoughts were heavy as fuck, meaning it was contaminating my reality and I was not in the moment. I was constantly thinking. And so I was like, oh man, maybe I should just go on YouTube. Maybe I should just, I just want an escape from reality. Does that remind you of anything? Escaping our problems by using a stimulus? Does that remind you of anything? Such as alcohol, such as marijuana, such as psychedelics, right? I'm not knocking any of these things, but a lot of these things are used as mediums as a way to escape our problems. Luckily for me, I do not do that type of stuff. Sure, I may use YouTube sometimes, but that's kind of my medium to, you know, escape reality and escape my problems. But what do you know? Like I said earlier, that suffering does not go away. Even though it may go away in your conscious field, your sub it's in your subconscious dormant. You have to deal with it at some time. It's gonna come back up and you do not want it to come back up at the wrong time, right? Because if it comes back up at the wrong time, oh my God, it is going to cause a more problems than you have right now. So if you deal with it right now, like I am doing, you're facing it head on, you're going through it. You're not getting over it, you're getting through it. Getting over it, it's still there, right? If you get through it, man, you're getting through it. All bullshit aside. And so with this, I'm still suffering, right? But I am learning so much at the same time. 
And this is not to enhance myself. This is not to put myself above others. I am, I am a neutral being, just like everything else within this universe. I'm just simply expressing my experience. And if anything you could take away within this video helps you, man, that means a lot. So I'm suffering and I love it, all right, to a certain extent. But love yourself because I love you, baby. And uh, yeah, peace the